The record itself is probably the best one that we've done so far. It was just a balls to the wall, just straight up live session. The first day, Dave was like, oh, we're doing this to tape and I'm gonna be here with you guys. And uh, I think it kind of reignited this flame in everybody, and it worked really well. Very improvised and real. We worked out the arrangements right there on the spot, and the moment they got it right, that's what you're hearing on the record. None of us had recorded a record together in Nashville, and none of us had, had recorded with Dave Cobb, our new producer, so it was quite exciting. But also, you know, you go into that, hmm, let's see how it turned out. We're all in the, the room, kind of waiting to record. And there's, so, there's always that little bit of anxiety as an artist. You're like, you're trying to be casual and cool, but you know you're about to document something forever. This was literally like watching us play, but putting a baffle between the amplifiers and the drums and just saying, press the red button. I talked to Dave on the phone and he just, he said all the right things. And so I was sold on the telephone call. And then when we w showed up there, um, it was exactly what we wanted to do. I think we just talked about making a record that felt like those classic records that we loved. We set it up the same way it would have been if you were rehearsing in your in your, your garage when you're 15. We had the amps in the room with the drums, which no producer has ever allowed me to do. And then we also did the vocals live as well. My Miles was in the booth next to us. Some of the songs are like maybe one or two passes, and that was the vocal. It just happened. I mean, as we're tracking the record, it was the record. It sounded like the mix. And that happens very seldomly. The way that this record worked is there's a lot, of, we have a lot of material written over from the last conspirator, a lot of the stuff was written during the last conspirators tour and then I started getting into getting the demos together and sending them out and so we just sort of tooled everything together as far as arrangements were concerned. And then we spent three weeks in pre-production just playing everything live in my studio and, uh, and that was it and then we went to Nashville. There was literally no preparation, it felt like, you know, just compared to how we used to do it. Well, it's the next evolution. It's the scary going into the unknown. That's trying to really capture a vibe and the excitement more so than about perfection and technicality, per se. It's about as real as you can get, so, you know, it's got all the stains and scars and everything rock and roll should have. And, and that was kind of the impetus for making the record, and we, we did it exactly that way. There's a whole story, I don't know if you know anything about the whole Nashville trip. We took a bus to Nashville. It's the smart move, it's the safe move. It was exciting, but it was scary at the same time. What could happen? What could possibly happen? Excuse my French, but this is a total shit show. <laughs> So there was a lot of how you normally do things, obviously, that changed for everybody, being that this was the, the whole pandemic. And so by the time we went in to make this record, it had become sort of par for course. So we got a tour bus together and we arranged to drive all the way to Nashville that way. We didn't have to deal with the airports or any other kind of public exposure, right? And we'd followed all, this pro all these protocols. It almost seemed kind of like extreme. We all tested before pre-production, tested after pre-production. We get to Nashville, test again before the studio. Miles is singing in the booth. He was the only one not in the live room with us. And we kept, you know, up until the unfortunateness, he kind of was singing pretty much live the entire thing. We had sort of like really put down most of the record in five days. Then there were there were I think two or three songs that long story I tracked by myself and on my computer. <laughs> About 24 hours in I was like, man, my allergies are starting to figure out what's going on here. And then it was definitely not allergies. Without pointing fingers at Miles. <laughs> but to his credit, he was in the booth singing a good chunk of the record while he's actually fighting COVID. I called Slash, because I wasn't gonna go and <laughs> go back in the room with everybody. And I'm looking at my phone, and I'm like, that's Miles, why would he be calling me? He's in the building. And so we had to test regularly while we were there. It turned out Miles was positive. And it was like a domino effect from there. <laughs> we all shared in the experience of recording a record together. And yes, unfortunately, COVID did go through the camp. 
you know, it's part of the story. It's part of making the record. It's like we were kind of under the weather. I think the adrenaline of recording helped get us through. All in all, the whole thing was a very memorable adventure. <laughs> It's a whole epic journey, isn't it? Getting on a bus, living in a, in the same uh, facility together. Studio, you know, house, studio, house, studio, house. We were kind of good in the first couple days, like getting comfortable with the new studio. Because, you know, you walk in, it's like there's, each hallway is lined with photos of the past. Waylon Jennings, Dolly Parton. Elvis recorded here. That building, you know, is the, is the building that Chet Atkins built. There's uh, not only musical history, but just a vibe in the room. It's tangible, you can feel it. What I'm trying to do is just kind of feed off the energy from those, all those things that have been done in that room is nuts, you know. We were setting up, and once we kind of picked our spots, they were like, well, um, well, Frank's in Dolly's spot. I think I got some of that mojo there. Some of the greatest of all time have been in that room, and you want to do that room justice. They built this at the height of what they call the Nashville Sound. It became so successful, they needed a room to capacitate an entire string section, choir, band, and singer in one room. Come to Slash's record, we're doing a rock record with no headphones, all live in one room, and separation's unbelievable, man. It can hold a choir, it can hold Slash's 200 watt amplifiers. And it's just the room itself, when you're playing in there, it just sounds amazing. It's just a vibe that you can't get doing it really any other way. The chemistry of the five of us is not having to tell the other person what to play. Even if we haven't seen each other in months, it's just like riding a bike. And we've been together all this time and making some, I think, pretty good music and having a good time. You know, when you think about how many changes happen in, in a lineup from the Rolling Stones to any number of bands, there's always changes. But the fact that it's been the same five guys for going on a decade is says something. It's crazy to consider it's been a decade because it just flew by. Even with this little pause we had over the last little while, we sort of got together quickly and the songs came together quickly. They were they were a machine. I think a lot of times in record making, it becomes a, a process. While we're making this record, I think we pushed everybody to just be crazy, like we were on stage and go for it. And people always say, you know, I saw the band live, they were so much better than the record. And so I think we tried to eliminate the wall between seeing Slash and, and, and the band live. I mean, I knew they were great. You know, I knew they were going to come in here and kill it. But what it did surprise me is the sound Slash gets when he plays Les Paul. I mean, Les Paul's an incredible guitar, but when in his hands, it sounds like, you know, a chainsaw. And the solos on the record, he's, he's doing them live. It's legendary, it's iconic, and it's memorable, and it's thematic. The guitar playing on it is all really, really spontaneous. Nothing's really worked out. This is like three takes entirely, and we're done. And in this, on this particular record, just having that sort of spontaneity and the energy of the group as a whole, the collective, um, that's a highlight. So right now we have 10 new songs. They're not staples yet, but they're gonna be. I think it's exciting when a new rock and roll record comes out that feels like an album. You put your headphones on, turn out the lights, and just dive right into it and get lost in it. And I hope people look at it as a record. I just hope that they enjoy listening to it and it provides a certain kind of excitement and energy and that they're happy listening to it. Well, I'm excited for them to hear the story and how it happened, you know, <laughs> but just that it's a, the perfect reflection of what this band is. It's a, a, a band of five dudes that when you hear us on stage, it's it's just these five guys. It's nothing else, you know, tracks, there's none of that. It's all legitimately us and that's what you're hearing on this album. But I think the fact that all five of us are involved in, in these last couple records and especially this one makes it in a lot of ways the quintessential conspirators record. I, I hope that they hear a, a record that they'll hear and they'll go, hey, you know, I, I can relate to that. There's that strength in knowing that somebody else feels the same way you do about something. Or maybe it's just as simple as that's a badass riff. Just turn off, turn it up loud, and rock out. Oh, oh, oh.